this part of the presentation. I want a cow, a whole herd of cows that require no input. They can do it on their own. They make me money on their own. I'm going to start out by reviewing some facts. At least 65% of annual cow costs are spent on feed. As a rancher, as a cow-calf producer, feed and pasture is my biggest expense. It's your biggest expense. 70% of the feed my cow consumes is strictly for maintenance. Only 30% goes towards production. What do we get paid for? Production. So what does that tell you? 70% of every dollar I spend on feed and pasture has no economic return. Now I may not be able to stop that, but I'm going to be aware of that. As a businessman, it doesn't feel good to spend money that never comes back to me. Bigger cows eat more than smaller cows. I've been given talks similar to this for 14, 15 years now, and basically the same talk. I, you know, I have not changed my mind on anything. I've added stuff to the talk, but it's the same talk. This used to be a huge thing to talk about. I mean, people would get up and leave when you start making statements like that. I remember it probably 12 years ago, I had a little group in Kansas, I think Colby, Kansas, and we just had some tables set up here, maybe 20 people around these tables, and I said, bigger cows eat more than smaller cows, and I had a guy sitting right here, slam the table, scared the crap out of me. <laughs> he got my attention, and he says, now wait a minute, kid. He says, I've got some big 1,500 pound cows, and I've got a few smaller 1,000 pound cows. He said, I've sat out there day after day watching those cows graze side by side. He says, you can't convince me that that big cow is eating any more than a little cow. Now we talked about that for a little bit, maybe a couple minutes. And I finally realized he's right. This guy was right. I wasn't going to convince him of anything that day. <laughs> However, if I could take his big cow and put it in a pen over here, take his smaller cow and put it in a pen over here, feed those two cows the exact same thing every day for just a month, you're going to see a big difference. That little cow is going to get roly-poly fat on what it takes just to maintain that big cow. The big cow will eventually starve on what it takes to maintain the little cow. Big cows eat more than little cows. Big cows require more feed for maintenance. Okay, now enough about cow size. This is where I spend most of my time nowadays. I, I think we've got the world convinced that big cows eat more than smaller cows. Heavy milking cows require more feed than maintenance. Does that make sense to everybody? It takes energy to make milk. Let me, let me continue or, or finish that statement. Heavy milking cows require more feed for maintenance even when they are not lactating. How many of you knew that? Usually not very many in most of my audiences. Even when they're not lactating, they still require more feed for maintenance. So you can have a little bitty high milking cow that's eating as much as a low milking big cow. It has to do with the visceral organs or the internal organs, the genetic makeup of the factory. The heavy milking cows require more maintenance energy to maintain their body year round. Now here's something, I, it took me a couple years to, to recognize this. Most cows in Missouri probably, I don't know a herd in Missouri that has, that doesn't have too much milk. Most cows, most herds have enough or too much milk. And most herds are still selecting for more milk. If you've got a herd of cows that's a little heavy milking, and they're producing steer calves, we're going to send those steer calves to, let's say, Scott City, Kansas to feed out. What, could, what do we already know about those steer calves when they hit the feedlot? They eat more grain. They will eat more grain just for maintenance. And they've got the same genetic makeup as their mamas, even though they're not going to produce milk. Does that make sense? It bothers me when the so-called experts in the beef industry, the university guys, the seed stock producers, the AI companies, refer to milk as a maternal trait. 
I'm going to tell you, most of you know what I'm saying here. Milk is not a maternal trait. It's not a maternal trait. It's a growth trait. Why would I want more milk in a raised beef cow herd? What would be the reason? Bigger, bigger calves, bigger weaning weights. Weaning weight is a, is a growth trait. So milk is not a maternal trait, it's a growth trait and it's the most inefficient growth trait that I deal with. And I'm going to use research, and this is a study out of the USDA uh, Center in Miles City, Montana to back that statement up. Let's suppose that we have a cow and a calf in front of us here today. Now, the cow's here and here's her, here's her calf. This calf is 150 days old. If I wanted to wean this calf at 150 days, could I do it? Anybody think I can't? He's old enough to wean. If I wanted to leave him on his mama for another 150 days, could I do it? Sure. Their study, now get this, their study says that if we separate that cow and calf, if we separate it, we can get the exact same gain with 15 to 20 percent less feed less energy than if we leave them together. What's that tell you about milk? If we separate the cow and calf, we'll get the same gain with 15 to 20 percent less feed than if we leave them together. Milk's very inefficient and very expensive. Every dollar that I put in that cow to produce milk, to raise it, make this calf bigger, somewhere along the line we're losing a bunch. Now I'm not telling you that you know, a lot of people say, well, now I've got that figured out. We're just going to wean early every year. I'm not in favor of weaning early. I'm not a fan of early weaning except as a drought management tool. If I'm, if I'm in a drought and I don't have as much forages as I think I need out there to get through the winter, what, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Get those calves off the cow. Put them somewhere else because I can get the same gain with less feed somewhere else. That allows me to keep my cow herd. But I don't like to do that unless I have to during a drought. I'd rather leave my calves, at least my heifer calves, on their mamas all winter. Basically no weaning. We'll take them off when they're 10, 11 months old. Why take them off then, kid? I'll just leave them with the cow. <clears throat> I don't have enough, enough guts yet, Greg. Greg wants to know why take them off then. Do you leave your calves on? Uh, the heifers, yeah. Yeah. I never weaned. And, and never weaned. Never move them. And I know a couple of herds that are doing that, and not every cow herd can do that. You know, it, it takes a adaptation. Some, some of to those do cows that. are 20 years old. I knew we were going to hear about the 20 year old cows. <laughs> and they've been doing it for 10 years. Yeah. But maybe I'm lucky. No, no, you, you <laughs> sourced your cows to work for a living. I, you wean them at what age? I don't. He doesn't wean. So when they had dropped a new calf, which has been the, the, the older calf. And well, the cow just kicks her off. If, if the cow doesn't kick the old calf off, you've got a problem with calf. What happens, uh, I'll kind of explain this, but cows are just like any other wild animal. Who weaves the deer? But they all get weaned. And every time the doe deer has another baby, there's a yearling not too far away from her. But he's not nursing. She's dried up, and he knows she's dried up. He doesn't go back and check. If that if that heifer calf's going to go to be a, an old cow someday and have 20, 20 calves for you, that cow has to drag her around and show her what to eat in the winter and where to go and eat snow in the winter because the water's frozen. Now, Greg, are you going to give this talker mine? <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly exactly what I was going to say. There's there's huge advantages. I don't know what that cow is supposed to eat in the winter time. She knows and she teaches her calf. I can't teach that cow how to eat snow for water in the winter time. She watches the little calf watches mom and learns how to do it. You know, I, I, we get cold in Colorado. My wife likes to take care of the cow herd. Uh, cow herd. Uh, one year we had snow, cold weather, and we have to break ice. So she'd go out there three days in a row breaking ice. She came back. She said, "You know, the only tracks around that tank are mine." <laughs> you know, what's happening? You know, but if you have those calves somewhere else, uh, you, you know they they will not learn those things on their own. Uh, the other thing. How do you keep your herd maturing and your 
maturing calves from getting bred? How do I keep my early maturing calves from getting bred? Bred by what? <laughs> yeah. You, you know, we're, we're, in my case, we are weaning the bulls at about eight months. No later than that. Uh, in most cases, it's probably a good idea to take those bull calves and, and, and band them, or, or they're going to be problem calves. What is Greg? <laughs> <laughs> Greg says he leaves his heifer calves out there. Sometimes he's harvesting his, his steer calves. Well, I have to sell them in January because like, my payments are due. So in January, he pulls his steer calves off and sells them. He's not taking his little calves back like you are. Right. Uh, you know, as far as the early maturing, you, a lot of this kind of comes with the whole program. You know, when we quit babying our cows, we quit getting heifers bred on the cow. You know, when you start forcing things to work a little harder for a living, we kind of start fitting nature's side. As far as, you know, I watched our cow herd. If I have a cow that never kicks that calf off, she just keeps milking and milking and milking and we're a month away from calving, she still produces milk. What can I assume about that cow? She's open. She's open. She has no reason to dry up, so she's not. Any other thoughts about that? My point is, milk is not nearly as great a thing as you have been led to believe. It's very expensive. We do not raise calves from birth to weaning on milk. What do we raise them on? Grass. I hear that elk again. I don't know where it's at now. There's a, there's a study, a fairly recent study out of, I think it's Australia, that says that 80 to 85% of a calf's ability to grow genetic, or ability to grow from birth to weaning is due to the genetic foraging ability. <coughs> Only 15 to 20 percent is uh, accredited to milk. Milk becomes a bypass protein supplement to that calf. We're not raising calves on milk. We need milk to get that calf started, but once he starts grazing, we don't need that much milk. Okay, I hope oh, no, I'm, I'm not through here. Milk is not a maternal trait, it's a gross trait. Let's assume that I'm right in that. I'm the only one saying that. But if I'm right, what would you assume to be a true maternal trait? Survivability? More important than that. Fertility. Reproduction and fertility is the most important maternal trait. What's the correlation between high milk over here and high fertility over here. Inverse. High milk cows tend to be hard keeping cows that are hard to get bred back. It's a fact of life. Number five, there's a direct straight line correlation between cow size and cost of production. The data I'm referring to here came from standardized production analysis or SPA. They've worked with hundreds, maybe thousands of ranches all across the United States. And their data suggests that cattlemen with the largest cows had the highest cost of production. No secret there. Big cows eat more than smaller cows. Their data also tells us that cattlemen with the largest cows had the lowest profits. And we know why. The cows were literally eating up their profits. Would it be safe to assume that most cows in Missouri are too big? You know, no matter where I'm at, that's a pretty safe assumption. I just want to make sure that you and I are on the same page there. Most cows in Missouri are too big. Why is that? Did you go out one day and say, you know, my cows aren't big enough. I want them bigger. Nobody did that, did they? How did you get your cows so big? What were you after when you got your cows so big? Weaning weight. Bigger calves, weaning weight, exactly. We were told to increase our production, which means weaning weights, and we'd increase our profit. We didn't think about those cows getting big. Do big cows always wean the biggest calves? No. I'm going to share a study that came out of uh, the University of uh, North Dakota. Chris Ringwall took their university cows and separated them into five different herds based on their size. 
The small cows in that herd weighed almost 1,250 pounds. 